Hello and welcome to PCOM 300. I am your professor, Dr. Matt Barton. And in, the, in this uh, introductory lecture, I just want to briefly go over what is what it is we'll be studying, how we're going to go about it, some of the major projects in the course. And hopefully uh, by the end of this, you'll agree this is a one heck of a program. And you're going to be glad that you uh, signed up for it. At least that's my personal goal for this. Uh, first of all, though, uh, what is PCOM? What is this course all about? What do we hope that you will get out of this? Uh, well, first of all, what, is it, what does it stand for? It's kind of a, it's fun to say, PCOM, uh, but somebody might ask you, what, what is that, in fact, so you can tell them it's professional communication. <laughs> now, that's probably not going to answer their question very well because, of course, what does that mean, professional communication? We need to go a little bit deeper and think about it. And here's what other folks, you know, if you dig around in the uh, the scholarship around this, you know, it's, it's getting to be a term that you're starting to see in the business magazines as well. But uh, for our purposes, it's an academic field. So you could major in English, mass communication, communication studies, and professional communication is one of those fields now. However, it encompasses all of those. Uh, so as we'll see as we get into this, you'll be taking courses not just in communication studies, but also in English, mass communication, uh, philosophy, uh, marketing. Uh, there's a lot of different courses uh, that have something to do with communication, that have something to offer. Some that you might not have thought about yet. So uh, the idea here is instead of just focusing on just one single thing, like how to make videos or, you know, how to write uh, an essay or a uh, report, we want to see if we can combine all of those different forms of communication into one big uh, system, uh, one field. So it's kind of massive in that sense. Uh, but as we're seeing, and this is a theme I'm sure will keep coming up throughout the semester, is it's it's getting rarer to find somebody that can get by on just one you know, type of communication, right? I, you know, some of my friends from when I started in school, they... Uh, were really good at writing email so they at that time that was a the big thing was can you write a good email you know, all the other uh, folks they work with were good on the phone they're very good oral communicators but when it came to the new i mean email seems really old-fashioned nowadays but you know just imagine something like like texting uh today for example uh, so you might be really good at texting but hey, you know, may, might also be good to have some of those oral skills so you can handle the, the phone as well as the text, uh, as well as writing that formal email. Uh, maybe you need to make some videos. Uh, you know, maybe this company is looking into social media and they want somebody to tweet uh, for them. Uh, so they really need people that are not just, you know, really drilled down into one special thing, uh, but can get, get at this sort of bigger picture, this bigger communication network. Now, all of the different tools, all of the different media that you can bring to bear uh, to assist this company or a business or organization or, or, or what have you. And so as we'll see, there's quite a bit of demand for this sort of uh, broad set of skills. So that's what this program is trying to address. Uh, so let's see. How information is created, managed, distributed, and consumed in businesses and other professional contexts. So... You'll notice there's a lot of uh, scientific work being done. We'll get into like, uh, yeah, this next point here. Uh, sociology, sociologists are in the workplace. Psychologists are in the workplace. Uh, believe it or not, even uh, people who make games uh, for a living are in the workplace trying to figure out what can they do to enhance the communications that are or maybe are not taking place uh, in this field. And to kind of give you a little flavor here, uh, before we get into some of the examples, I, I thought I would hop over to Indeed.com, which is one of the sites uh, that will give you uh, job listings. You could type in a keyword and where you might want to work. So I typed in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, and then communications. And we're just looking here within a 25-mile radius. And just with that word communications is showing me 50 jobs here and, and some of these look pretty lucrative okay so let's just take a look here you know at some of the places you might be you know in a couple of years you know depending on where you are in the program right now and uh, we see there's a up at the top here communications director and what i noticed is their their first bullet point was 
growing a communications team, you know, and managing this this staff. So this idea of the communications team, you can see that is uh, an area where if you were able to come to this company, now they do mention they want five years experience, okay. <laughs> uh, so there's that. But, you know, if you take a program like this, you could say, look, I have, I've taken a lot of courses in uh, building a communications team. You know, I, kn I know how to run a communications infra infrastructure. You know, I can develop a communications uh, strategy. Uh, and that's just the very first item here. But if we scroll down, you start to get a sense of some of the diversity of the jobs. I mean, this this next one here, for example, is uh, for the U.S. Army. So U.S. Army Public Affairs Specialist. And so again, I haven't I haven't dug into all of the uh, the details on these, but what I'm noticing is uh, repeatedly how they are stressing not just communication but uh, multimedia. You see there specifically on this one. This is a Internal Communications Intern at Capital One. That's a pretty good place to work. Uh, so experience with creating effective multimedia communication materials, both print and electronic, and you see there the next point, oral and written skills. So, I mean, the proof is, you know, is right here. They want, you know, all these different companies, they want people with this diverse uh, skill set. Yes, you could come in and make a great PowerPoint. You could put a website together. Uh, you might be strong with a social media but you know do you also have those oral skills and you could say yes yes i've taken you know at least a couple of courses in that and then we just just keep going i mean it goes on and on and on you know some of these would be like more video focused but even these even this like videographer so this is a videographer for the saint claude rocks baseball club uh, if you look at what they're asking for there it's not just video the next bullet point there says yes this is in the creation of video but also look look a little closer also written <laughs> graphic content uh, so all of these uh, places I you know I really get excited for you and this is just a quick little you know five minute search literally just typed in a couple words here you know imagine if you expanded this search out a little broader looking at some different towns some different states even uh, you really start to get a, a sense of the potential that you're going to have with this skill set that you get out of the out of the program. Uh, so just uh, as our first little writing prompt, I want you to go to this site, uh, indeed.com, uh, type in communications, and wherever it is you might want to work, if you don't want to be in Minnesota, type in something else there. Uh, you know, maybe play around a little bit with the keywords, but just see what you can find, some, some job that looks, uh, you don't have to apply for it. You know, I'm just saying a job that you find interesting, that looks kind of interesting, something that, you know, catches your eye. Uh, and then, you know, read uh, the rest of the the bullet points on it. And then uh, just come back and, you know, tell me about that. What is it that interests you about that job? Uh, what are they looking for? You know, just give me a, a sense of, uh, you know, what, what fascinates you about that. Okay, so moving on then, let's look at some examples of professional communication, the type of stuff you might make. And uh, I'll go ahead and say now one of the goals of the program is by the time you're done and you graduate college and you take the, the, uh, uh, the capstone course, the sort of uh, end of this uh, sequence, there'll be a course like this, but it'll be a 400 level. And part of that will be a, uh, a portfolio that you'll have and be able to share with potential employers. Uh, where you will hopefully leverage a lot of these different types of uh, communication. So you might have uh, a LinkedIn profile. So I give that as my first example here of professional communication. It's If you're not familiar with LinkedIn, it's basically, it reminds me, I guess, of uh, something like Facebook. But instead of just chatting with your friends and family, it's very oriented towards the workplace. You know, businesses and professional organizations and you can put a resume up here it's, it's a good way to find jobs and, and make connections and they really urge you on LinkedIn to only connect with people that you actually know in real life you know they don't want to just load it up with, with spam and uh, you know bots because <laughs> uh, it's kind of the system of hey I know this you know I worked with Matt uh, back at uh, you know Northwestern State or whatever uh, or I met, uh, I've, I've heard a couple of his conference presentations, etc. So it's a way to kind of get those uh, 
referrals from uh, colleagues or other coworkers or people that you went to school with. Uh, but it's really meant to help you start building up that credibility. And so that when employers, this is basically what you want employers to see, right, when they go and look at, uh, look at your profile. So it's a good example of uh, professional communication. Now, there are lots of ways you can write a really crappy LinkedIn profile and it would actually hurt you. <laughs> uh, so one of the goals with this course, obviously, is to, you know, our course is like a 332, which are part of this program, is to, is to help you decide, like, what should you put on your profile? What should you leave out? Uh, how can you really emphasize the stuff that you uh, want to emphasize? Uh, so all of those are skills that you'll learn as, as part of this program. Uh, moving on to some other examples. Here's uh, a... Uh, I don't know, it's an organization, I guess, or a center called the Pew Research. And you probably have come across them before. A lot of uh, people write, use uh, Pew Research when they're doing research as part of their classes. But uh, basically, they do they go out and they do some kind of field research. They compile it up into very readable reports. And they're considered fairly, uh, you know, as these things go, I guess, fairly objective. You, know, you see a lot of different people that refer to them and cite them. Now, what I like about them, though, is even though they're compiling all these statistics, getting all this this data, there's a lot of effort to make it readable. So you can you can read. You don't have to be an expert. You know, you can you can sit down. You can read some of these uh, reports, and, and even if just looking at the website design, uh, you know, some things that are popping out at me is just it's very clear how you would get around this site. They got these tabs up here, and uh, that's broken up into like a second layer of tabs. Uh, and just to kind of break up the monotony of the screen, they have this, what they call a fact fact tank. <laughs> fact tank. A little hard to say, but it, you know, it's, it's over here on the side, and it gives just some, like, quick little uh, excerpts, I guess, from their reports. Uh, so anyway, that's just another example. You know, they hire all kinds of people to come in and, you know, do the research and write up the reports, and that's, you know, something you could do. You know, Pew is just one of many, many, many uh, uh, centers uh, doing that kind of work. Uh, another example is uh, videos. And, you know, we looked at some of those earlier in that job listing. But, you know, this is something I've done quite a bit myself. I have a YouTube channel called Manchat where I interview uh, people in the games industry, uh, everybody from... Uh, you know, programmers to game designers to the publishers of the games, to the musicians and, and artists, uh, you name it. And so in that, in a sense, that's professional communication right there, that interview uh, setup. Uh, so it's kind of near and dear to me. I'm always looking for ways to, like, make, learn how to make better videos and how to, uh, you know, leverage YouTube a little bit better. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm just one of, it's becoming really commonplace uh, now that it's so much cheaper to make videos. I mean, you can basically make a video with your uh, your iPhone now and, you know, upload that thing to, to YouTube and then you could uh, post host it there for your company, your fellow uh, employees or coworkers to see uh, these things. So it's really become a lot more economical. It's a lot more in demand uh, for people that can do that sort of thing. And here's just one of many, many examples you can find of a health and safety video. Uh, so people, they find, I guess, that it's more effective if you can show, <laughs> like, don't touch this, or you know, don't don't walk under that, or, you know, here's how to properly, uh, uh, you know, put this uh, harness on, or whatever it is. And so that's the kind of thing there that's, it makes more sense to, to do that as a video, uh, perhaps, than it would be to have that in a, you know, a set of uh, pages for people to read, or, or a diagram. Now, here's some other examples. I tried to pick some fun stuff that you might not have thought about as professional communication, but uh, this is, a, I think, a really cool one. It's IKEA. Uh, they've got this, what they're calling, augmented reality application. So I don't know if you can tell from this photo what, what's happening there, but uh, essentially, you uh, instead of just looking through a catalog and picking out a, you know, a chair you might like, you can use your phone and hold it up to the room and then they'll put the chair or the couch or whatever somewhere in the room. And then you can 
fiddle with it, rotate it, you know, and just get a sense of like what it's, what it's going to look like. <laughs> so I would say this is a professional communication happening. It's not really entertainment. I mean, it's kind of fun to, to play with it, but that's not really the purpose of it, right? Uh, it's really trying to uh, communicate between this IKEA company and the, the client or, or the customer, right, to give them some more you know, this is a lot more economical than getting the chair, shipping it to you, seeing if putting it together, uh, seeing if you like it. You know, uh, this little app is pretty doggone clever, uh, if you ask me. And it's people like you, you know, professional communicators that you know help them come up with the idea for this app, uh, put it how to put it together, how to teach people how to use it. You know, if it's not put together well. You know, if this app is really difficult to download and install, and you're like, how in the heck do I put a chair? How do I do that? <laughs> it's, it's poor communication at that point. If it's effective, then it's uh, at least easy, if not fun, to use. Now, here's just some other examples. I mean, you can find these all over the place. Uh, this is from an investment site, investment app. And you can see there they have a tone. Hello, how can we help? And they got their search bar up there and then they've broken this up into little uh, articles you can read uh, so again it's not just the text it's how the text is organized it's how this is laid out it's the use of these little circular icons to provide some some coherence some unity some style and design to even this you know simple help page and you know if you get if you get, if you do this well it's it's big bucks you know, this is what the companies want. They don't want a shoddy-looking, confusing website any more than you want to have to navigate that thing. <laughs> uh, so they need the people. They need you. Uh, and here's an example. You probably uh, realize this, but just to emphasize, how many companies are becoming increasingly dependent on social media? Uh, so it's, it's really becoming a key part of a lot of their business plans, uh, not just marketing, but you know, just, just all aspects of the businesses are, are moving on to, uh, uh, there's a bunch of them, but Twitter's certainly one of the most popular. Uh, here's a company I like uh, to keep track of. It's Virgin Galactic. And they are trying to do a, uh, they're trying to get people into space. I think it's like $250,000 for a ticket. <laughs> and you can ride on this sort of super jet thing and, and actually say, well, I've gone to space. I don't know all the details, but I guess you'd be weightless for a while or in uh, free fall. Uh, but the way they're communicating, what they're, communi what they're communicating about here is a rather delicate situation where they had a, uh, a test flight. And they had a lot of uh, people investing in the company that were excited because they thought that you know, if the test flight was successful, that would make it seem like this was a lot more viable. And they're a lot closer to that goal of, uh, you know, sending people to space. Uh, unfortunately, there was some kind of problem with the computer, I believe. And uh, as soon as they had to call off the test and, and land. It didn't, it didn't crash or anything like that. You know, thank God. But it um, it was some. It didn't go successfully, right? So the stock just. <laughs> it's like I think it, by uh, by the end of it, I think it had lost like thirty or more percent of its value coming off of that, uh, the high of the expectation of, of the test flight. So they really had to put, you know, this was like real money on the line here. You know, they don't want to just, uh, you know, <laughs> blurt something out. You know, they really had people come in and, you know, consult with them on the, on these tweets about, you know, how do we report this in a way that will be truthful? You know, we don't want to be unethical or get, you know, get sued for misinformation, you know, anything like that. Uh, on the other hand, we don't want to make it seem like the problem was worse than it was because that will, you know, cause the the stock will probably go down even even lower if, if we make it sound like it's just a really serious problem. So this is the kind of situation here that's you know very commonplace, you know, in the world of uh, business, and you know this is why they do want people who are sensitive. Uh, you know, not just writing correctly, um, writing effectively, being mindful of who's going to be reading this and what kind of impact uh, the words or the images uh, might have on, on, on the audience. Now, here's the goals of the overall PCOM program. You know, obviously creating effective communication strategies appropriate for diverse audiences and purposes. And really, we could just, you know, look at these last couple of examples here and you could see 
uh, some of that diversity, right? This, like this Virgin Galactic tweet, you know, part of this is uh, to the customers, you know, people that want to buy the tickets, but also to those investors I talked about, right? The people sitting on <laughs> Robin Hood. <laughs> like, do I want to put, you know, another thousand dollars into this Virgin Galactic stock? Hmm. Uh, let me see if I can uh, read this tweet again and see if I uh, like the sound of it. Uh, evaluating concepts and applying theories in the use and presentation of images, uh, along with information, we'll certainly get into that. Uh, conducting research, evaluating information by methods appropriate to the professional context, audience, and the desired outcome. So you won't be, you're probably used to the idea of writing a research paper for an English class, let's say. But but even with the, in professional communication, there's still a lot of research going on. Matter of fact, sometimes the stakes are extremely high. I mean, think about that, this uh, line about evaluating information. You see, you see this tweet, somebody claims they know what's going on at Virgin Galactic. <laughs> uh, but maybe that's just some uh, random person that doesn't really know what, they could be just saying anything, right? So how, how can you evaluate that information? Uh, evaluate communication artifacts for their ethical dimensions. Again, this, I know I keep coming back to this example of the uh, of this test flight, but it really, you, know, you can see how there could be ethical dimensions to that. You know, if they lie, um, and what are they saying? We have completed the post-flight inspections and root cause analysis of what caused the onboard computer to halt ignition of the rocket motor. Corrective actions have been defined, corrective actions have been defined and work is already underway. So you notice what they don't tell you <laughs> is what the, their cause was. That seems to have been omitted. So perhaps you could say that was maybe somewhat unethical that they left, left that out. Do I think that? I, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it some more. But it is a possible ethical dimension. You know, Maybe it was something that would sound really horrible, so they decided not to put it on there because they thought the... Uh, investors might get frightened and, you know, sell their stock. You know, just making stuff up, making stuff up here. But that would be an example if they said, hey, let's, you know, kind of be a little bit, mis now I'm not saying this about Virgin, <laughs> but if a company was like, let me just, you know, let, let's uh, sort of tweak the wording here so we don't sound like, basically, let's, let's uh, bend the truth, shall we say, uh, so we won't frighten away investors. Now, now that sort of thing is where you do, across that line and it's uh, not just wrong but it could get you sued and, and all kinds of uh, legal trouble all right critically evaluate their own work and that of others for accuracy fairness clarity and professionalism another big reason they would a company would want to hire somebody with a professional communication background is precisely for this right say hey look at this tweet can you look look this over does is, is, is it accurate but is it you know is it clear <laughs> is it professional you know, you'll notice a lot of times you'll be working with people who are just super smart. They really know their job well. You know, they're, they're very technically skilled, you know, whatever the case may be. But when it comes to, like, writing <laughs> or presenting uh, in a, uh, themselves to the world in the form of a video or... I mean, think about how many professionals you know who uh, get in the news because they wrote something really, uh, you know, horrible in a tweet... Uh, or maybe it's just like typos, you know, errors and grammar and things, and it, it doesn't look good, and it kind of ref can even uh, reflect badly on, on the company as a whole. Uh, so obviously they don't want that. <laughs> so, uh, so this could be part of your job, right, is to help them, uh, you know, make their writing, their communications more professional. And, and then lastly, and this is probably the, one of the most important things for this semester, is the idea of the personal brand, developing a plan for promoting that brand, you know, even knowing like what what is a personal brand. You know, we're going to get into all that and help you uh, to develop and promote it. All right, so here's just a quick, a few quick uh, things before we uh, leave off this first lecture. So we, this is the goals of the course uh, overall. So you notice a lot of this is just about describing and identifying things. We're just trying to give you a sort of big picture view uh, in this course. It is just a one credit course after all. Uh, we want to make sure you have a pretty good feel for the lay of the land and you know uh, the areas that you'll want to develop you know, over the next few years. 
uh, as you begin developing your, uh, you know, picking courses and developing that portfolio. Uh, so the key competencies, theories, ethical and cultural principles. Uh, the key communication theories in communication studies versus English versus mass communications. So all of those will be, you know, some, sometimes slightly and sometimes really different in the way they approach uh, communication. So that'll be a part of this course as well. I'm hoping to get some of the, some of the professors from these different fields here uh, to talk with us a, a little bit about what makes them different. Uh, we'll talk more about getting a career, uh, an internship, uh, in professional communication, that is, is key. Of course, uh, the portfolio, and then uh, describing and differentiating among the communication methodologies uh, available as, as part of this major. So, as you can see, it's, it's quite ambitious, but I want to keep things fairly light. And uh, my, my, really, my main goal with this course, personally, is I want you all to get to know each other. We'll be using the D2L forums quite a bit in here to try to uh, get some of that going. Because uh, I want you to form kind of a little community uh, around PCOM and, and really get to know your classmates well, your fellow uh, PCOM students, so you can network with them, you know, get excited about the topics, you know, <laughs> uh, get excited about the courses, because that's, that's really the key, is when you come together, you start sharing passion, sharing knowledge, uh, giving tips, feedback, support, you know, that, that's where the, it really happens. So, uh, again... I'll wrap it up here. Again, really, really happy to have you in this course. Really excited about it. Hope you are too. Uh, not just this course, but the whole PCOM program. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, uh, concerns, whatever the case may be, please uh, feel free to share those, and I will see you again very soon.